In this video, I'm going to cover the filter count option and show you some real-world examples. From my video on the fundamental convolutional algorithm, you should already be familiar with filters and features. The filter count option controls how many filters a convolutional layer has. Surprising, I know. We can increase the number of filters for more complicated tasks or for deeper layers that need to represent more abstract ideas. Or we can decrease the number of filters for less complicated tasks or for more shallow layers of the network. Notice how changing the filter count affects the size of the output. It also influences the training duration, the amount of memory needed, and the computational resources used. And that's it for the basics. Filter count is the least exciting and most important setting that you'll work with. I'm sure you're wondering what value you should use, and honestly, there is no right answer, only wrong answers. You'll constantly wonder if you could get better performance or accuracy by tweaking the numbers up or down. The best you can do is find a research paper that does roughly what you want in copying them. But they probably had more computational resources than you do, so at the end of the day, you'll just pick the biggest thing that fits into memory and hope for the best. But I don't want to leave you hanging, so to give you a sense of the number of filters you might use in practice, let's take a look at a real-world architecture. This is based on a model from my high-resolution GAN course on Udemy, link in the description. The task of this model is to determine if a picture of a human face is real or if it was generated by another neural network. Spoiler alert, this face was generated by a neural network. The input will be 512 by 512 pixels and of course have three features, red, green, and blue. Our first layer outputs 64 features and stays at our current resolution. Note that we're using a kernel size of 3x3 for all layers here unless I mention otherwise. The next layer does two things. It cuts the resolution in half and doubles the number of features. This is fairly typical. Increases in the number of features usually happen at the same time that we reduce resolution. Because we cut two dimensions in half and only doubled one dimension, the overall volume is cut in half. This is another common practice. It forces the network to compress information, which is what really requires intelligence. The next layer doesn't change the feature count or the resolution. After changing resolution or feature count, models often perform more processing at that same resolution and feature count before changing again. Now we get into a repetition of blocks of two convolutional layers. The first layer halves the resolution and doubles the feature count. The second layer simply performs more processing. However, we stop increasing the feature count at 512, even though we continue to decrease the resolution. Even though this is a large-scale, real-world task, it's fairly simple. There are only two categories, a real face or a generated face. So 512 features is enough. For a task like ImageNet that has a thousand categories, we might go all the way up to 2,048 features. From this point in the architecture, we'll continue with our pairs of convolutional layers, but now, the first will only decrease the resolution. It will no longer increase the number of features. We get all the way down to 4x4 resolution in our feature map. Then we do one last convolution with a 4x4 kernel size to get us down to 1x1. Finally, we use a dense layer to get our categories. You might notice that there's only one output instead of two, even though we have two categories, real and fake. We're using a trick that applies when you have exactly two categories. We use a single output, and we treat a high value as one category and a low value as the other. But anyway, back to our network. Hopefully that gives you a good frame of reference when thinking about real-world filter counts. We'll see even more examples of real-world architectures in future videos. I'll continue to use small filter counts in my demonstration animations, just keep in mind that both the resolution and filter counts can be much larger in our actual networks. Oh, and one last thing. In my real-world example, you might have noticed that the resolution stayed exactly the same or was cut precisely in half. But so far, we've always seen the resolution shrink a little with each convolution. 
I'll talk about how we can control the output resolution like this in the next couple of videos about padding and stride. So subscribe if you're interested.